Spirit of God is moving in the church. How do we know that that's evident? How do we know that the Spirit of God is moving in His church? One of the ways we, dem- we see demonstrated that the Spirit of God is moving in the church is when His people are obedient. When people choose to follow the plan and the direction of God in their lives, that gives evidence that the Spirit of God is moving and working. And today will be a day where you will see example after example of obedience to God. For those of you who are parents, you know the blessing of simple obedience, right? Here's what we've asked you to do. Could you just do it? Just do it. And cherry on top, if you could smile about it. Oh, if it would be just joyful obedience, right? We today will see and hear steps of obedience taken by brothers and sisters where they are saying yes to the movement of God in their lives, to be baptized, obedience in baptism. So I want to talk with you from one verse of Scripture shortly this morning, and it's going to come out of Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Romans 6 verse 4 says, We were buried therefore with Christ by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We were buried with him, identified with him by baptism into his death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might walk in new life. Baptism is a symbol of what Jesus went through in order to become the Savior of the world. As was expressed in my prayer earlier, the center of the Christian faith, the center of the Christian life, the center of all of human history is that God stepped down into our condition. He took on flesh, coming as Christ the Son, eternal Son of God, came down into our condition. He lived a perfect life, the life that none of us could live. And he lived that perfect life so that he could willingly suffer and die to satisfy God's wrath against our sin. We have all sinned against God. No one here can claim self-perfect righteousness. We can't do it. So Jesus came, he gave his life by dying on the cross for our sins, and he rose from the dead. Jesus was perfect. He was the perfect sacrifice. And because he was without sin, the penalty of death could not remain on him. So God the Father sent God the Son, who was raised by God the Holy Spirit. Jesus died and was buried and rose from the dead. We are called, every one of us, who followed the name of Christ, who believe and trust in Him as our Savior, we are called to be baptized, to to demonstrate the symbol of what He did for us. We are put under water, Harris County water, so we know it's not super special. (laughs) You know, no angel is coming to touch and stir the waters. But we were put under the water to give a symbol that our Savior died for our sin. And it is our demonstration that we, we want to die to the sinful life. He was raised, and so we are raised after seven bubbles. Just kidding. Just kidding. We are brought up out of the water as a symbol that it is our desire to walk in new life to walk in the way of Christ, to walk as He walked, to live as He lived. Baptism does not save us. Baptism does not make us better Christians. 
We do not improve our standing before God. We do not climb one extra spiritual rung of the ladder to get closer to God because God already came for us. And for those who believe in Christ, we are filled with the presence of God now and forever. But our baptism is a step of obedience that God does bless. The purpose is to give a symbol and a picture of what Jesus did and to give a public witness to others of our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. So you will hear 11 examples this morning. And I want to just mention this to you, that if you walked in today and you have not yet been baptized, but you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that you believe that he died on the cross for your sins and rose from the dead, and you have not yet been baptized, and a spirit or a sense of conviction comes over you, then at a certain point in our service, I'm going to direct you to go and talk with one of our elders so that you can be baptized today. You can go home wet. It's summer. You'll be dry before you get to your car. The call is to obedience, church. The call is to stand before others and say, I believe Jesus died for my sin and he rose from the dead and there is no other name under heaven by which I can be saved. I must be saved. If you have not done that, do it. And we can help you do that today. In just a moment, I want to uh, invite our ushers to come up, and we're going to be taking, uh, uh, we'll be showing video announcements, and we will be collecting our offering this morning. And so I just want to prepare our ushers for that. Uh, I will pray, and then we will move into that. I believe that when a testimony and witness is given about the name of Christ here on earth, that the angels roar. The simple truth that the king of the universe came for his creation, died for us, rose to new life, and now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And when, t- when public witness is given, I believe like he did with Stephen, that Christ stands and the angels roar. So y'all get loud. When public witness is given for the name of Christ, when brothers and sisters are put in the water and when they are raised up, you can celebrate, you can shout, you can clap, you can join the angels in heaven because Christ, he is the only Savior of the world. And what we believe is really real.